for our grinder line, it's the heart of the machine. It's one of the huge differences we have from anybody else in the marketplace. When Vermeer started developing grinders, the first one was a TG400, and the cutting mechanism in that machine was what we call pin and plate, or a rotor. It wasn't really a drum skin. It was a large diameter shaft, and on that shaft you slide rotor discs, and they have six holes in the flanges, and you put hammers in between them and slide long pins through all those holes and mount hammers here and there around the surface of that rotor. Relatively common in the industry at that time. And one of the common issues with it was uh, pin removal or hammer chain. Place that hammer in the middle, you had to pull the long pin all the way out of all of those discs and maybe two or three other hammers as well and get at that pin. And then it was it became out of balance when you did it. There were some service issues with that original design. And I suppose as a result of that, maybe some other companies had started using some drum design, but they would weld their hammer on the surface of the drum. And it's difficult to weld something that's really hard. To be hard, you have to have a lot of carbon. And when you have a lot of carbon, you can't weld it easily. So it's never easy to weld hard stuff to something else. So we wanted to have something that was very robust, but not so difficult to replace or change or fix. Well, I remember pretty accurately, it was around Christmas of 1999, when Dwayne DeBoof, who was a product specialist at the time, that's, that's the brain behind the idea. He had the concept and he came in to the office where Gary Verhoof and I were working and he explained his concept, explained how the hammer went through the drum and to avoid going through a shaft, put a stub end on each end, and then the challenge was how to make it. What it comes down to is, is the, the through hammer design, uh, which is really different from anything that had been in the industry before. When you change so drastically from what's in the marketplace, uh, it, it takes a while for the market to really catch up to something that is new. They saw the advantages, but uh, really would it hold up? I think that was one of the one of the main questions out in the field was how durable is it? Because that's the drum is the heart of the machine, and it has to it has to last. Internally, we thought we had a home run. It met the criteria of less maintenance time, easier replacement of components compared to welding on. So yes, we, we felt we had a we had a winner on our hands at that time at the launch. Okay, with the series one. The hammer went through and it wasn't held tightly. It was like kind of loose in there. And a tip on each end, because it was a little bit loose, it could kind of rattle around a little bit. And that resulted in some undesired wear. So we wanted to be able to stop some of that wear. Plus we knew we were losing a little bit of energy there. So uh, we thought about how can we hold this hammer more rigid? And so we came up with a, a wedge system that was the big deal. We held it tight now. We, we stopped losing the energy due to rattling around and everything, holding it more firmly. And we, we solved the wear issue because there was no relative motion. Series two was a vast improvement over, over the series one drum. You know, as with any engineer, I, I think um, if you give them enough time, they'll keep improving, improving, improving. Uh, at some point, you'd have to say that's that's what we have to go to market with. And that's kind of where we were with the, the Series 2. Um, as you have it in the field, you start getting feedback, um, you know, from a service standpoint, from a customer standpoint. Uh, and as you start hearing those things, you start thinking, man, maybe there's a little bit better way to do this. And that's kind of where the, the Series 3 really has developed from. You know, these drums on these grinders, they, they weigh 3,500 to 10,000 pounds on Vermeer grinders, and they turn fast. So you have to balance these, and they wear, and you have to rebalance these. 
And so in the series two, it was our desire to improve the way that we balanced it. Stop having to weld on chunks of mass to bring it to balance, but be able to bolt it on. So uh, we have these pockets that we put in the end caps, balance pockets, so they can bolt on weight masses and simplify the balancing process. After the Series 2 had been in the market for a while, I recognized that it would be nicer to be able to ensure that the wedges were fully contacting the hammers. We came up with the idea of making part, uh, having a round feature in the wedges so that they could self-align and ensure full contact to the hammer instead of with the Series 2, they were rectangular and it's very difficult to manufacture that in a way that ensures that all, there's one, two, three, four surfaces that all need to be perfectly parallel. It's very difficult to achieve. So with the self-alignment of the radius, the roundness, now we can ensure that we have uh, full surface contact of the wedges to the hammer and more assuredly hold it still and solidly. That was one of the main things. Another facet of that, however, was how, because it's rounded, I was able to change the, the joint in the hammer. The hole could be cut with a round hole instead of a square cornered hole, thereby reducing the stresses in the drum, which is just all good. The square holes hadn't been a problem, but it was nice to know that now we had much lower stresses and down inside there too are weld, welded assemblies that are rounded and, and the stresses just flow much more smoothly and nicely through that drum. So I enjoyed and appreciate those facets of it. Another aspect that I wanted to try to improve was some of the difficulties encountered when removing a wedge on the Series 2. The wedge on a Series 2 is pulled from the other side through a long shaft, small shaft, and it can be difficult at times to induce the shock required to jolt that wedge loose from the other side through that long shaft. So the Series 3 makes use of a different design where it's all done on one end, tightened there and removed there. And so that's been uh, an improvement that we've enjoyed on the Series 3. As, as you see a grinder leave the factory, knowing that this design um, is at the heart of the machine, it just makes you feel proud. It, you know, it, for me, it's fun to see all these machines and all those designs and all those things and see how our Vermeer machines affect the customers in the world and all those things. And, and there's a lot of different intricacies that go into design. But I've really been blessed to be right where the work happens for decades. It's cool. <laughs>